Welcome back to another episode of Mr. Iron Bar featuring the Combat Diaries. So in this episode, I'm going to be covering a ton of Slayer related bosses because as you saw in the last video, I was doing a lot of Slayer for some totems for Scotizo. But little did you know, in between, I was doing as many boss tasks as I could during this Slayer grind. So I ended up hitting pretty much every single Slayer boss and bosses that you could also get from Slayer. So you're going to see a ton of gains on the combat diary section for slayer and also this will be my first time testing out the new bow of ferdinand so throughout this video i will be showcasing this bow and talking about where it's good at especially in these uh, specific boss tasks that i'm working on like dagonoth kings yes i got it all right let me get out of here but i got the rune throne axe one done so my preferred order for killing all three TKs in 9 seconds is Rex first and then followed by Supreme with Claws or I guess DDS and then followed by Prime usually because Prime takes the longest to kill. Wait, oh come on. Come on. Please. Yes. That took a little bit longer than I expected. The mane is a pivotal part of most men's looks and confidence. However, hair loss is a very common phenomenon that happens to most adults, male, by the age of 35. As a male in my 20s, it is apparent that my hair has thinned a lot over the years too. But, what if it is possible to keep our hair? Luckily, hair loss prevention exists and Keeps is the premium hair prevention service. The Keeps subscription service includes connecting you with a certified doctor who will tailor and send the right prescription every 3 months to your doorstep. You also have 24-7 access to your Keeps doctor to address any questions and concerns. Prevention is key. The faster you start using Keeps, the more hair you'll save. Check out some of these testimonials from Keeps customers. The Rice Fields, in collaboration with Keeps, is offering a 50% discount on your first order. Start saving your luscious hair now by clicking on my link keeps.com slash rice cup in the description thanks for listening back to the progress all right so my block list needs to be changed because combat diaries requires me to revisit some old bosses abyssal demons all right all right we got an abyssal demon task uh, i'm gonna take this opportunity to complete the abyssal sire stuff real quick Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this into a corrupted version because I definitely plan on keeping this forever. So here's the strength level difference between a crystal bow, 78, and the new bow. Holy shit, that's so many more max hits. 78 versus 106. That's insane. That's 18 range. No, that's 28 range strength more. Let me just talk about this bow generally speaking. So this bow is 4 takes which is whip speed. It can hit up to a 51 on slayer task. So probably mid 40s off task with a full crystal armor set. Incredibly strong. Really accurate as well. It's probably one of the most accurate or overall most accurate range weapon in the game. So imagine a boss that has very high defense like Armadale boss, Kriara. Or like skeletal mystics in chambers this bow will destroy them fossa as well and plenty of other mobs out there that have high defense so it's definitely one of the best range weapons out there but the blowpipe's still better on low defense for sure but when it comes to high defense mobs this bow is definitely a must-have keep in mind guys if you want to use the new bow Ferdinand properly you need to have the crystal armor set if you're using it on a slayer task you want to use the top and the bottom with the slayer helm not the normal helm for best results because of the individual pieces accuracy and damage boost. Now if you're using a bow outside of a slayer task, you should use the full set effect including the crystal helmet for the extra damage and accuracy set effect. Damn, I just won down this on my first try. Wow, that's insane. Oh damn, I failed that task. Okay, that one might be a little challenging. I think that's the one where I might have to bring Venge. I think I might have to Venge that one to do it fast. Don't stop moving, Respiratory Runner, and don't whip me. Okay, I did the, some of the easy ones. I did the one with the one vent cycle, so that's good. 
I plan on doing a part 2 testing of the Fernim bow on other bosses, so if you want to see more of the bow or just more PVM content in general, make sure to subscribe because I upload very frequently and you probably don't want to miss anything if y'all want to learn some new PVM stuff or just like watching that kind of things. Oh, damn, look at that one shot. Holy shit, that was insane. I'm gonna just face tank this. Nice, I got the face tank. Oh, I almost had it too with the Venge. Nice. It's just my claws is being dumb and it always misses. Not letting the spawns mature is pretty tough, but if I just set my Venge right before the explosion into two Dragon Claws, I should be able to get it a decent amount of times. Yes. Alright, that should have done it. Yay. Finished all the Sire tasks. Feels good, man. I am pretty sure. All right, let's see here. Yep, Abyssal Sire done. Okay, let's go and barrage the rest of these and get some fat ass totems. All right, you know what? Let's do a Jad Tass. There's also a bunch of Jad things I can do. All right, I think I figure out what I want to do here. I'm going to go just do a normal range run. I think this is good enough. I'm going to go with this setup. Melee, Max Claws. Venge, uh, some prayer, a bit of food, a bunch of range switches, a bow for the snipe, switch the bow for the majors and the jad and uh, red shins for the little blobbies. All right, wish me luck. Yo, I love this bow, man. It's so nice. This new bow is so good for not letting the uh, bats hit me. Super dope. So after using the new bow of Fernand at the fight caves, I can tell you that it definitely has a lot of uses. Especially if you don't have a twisted bow, I would say this bow is probably your overall best weapon, especially against the Majors and Jad. Just because they do have a bit of defense, the blowpipe is probably not going to hit that well anymore. And uh, it's also really good for speedrunning as well because of its insanely long distance and powerful hits. So good for the speedrunning task. Dude, this bow is so good. <laughs> oh my god. So the task where you cannot let the healers heal Jad is actually quite a tricky one if you don't know how the spawn works. So the healers will spawn where the normal mobs spawn and that means they can spawn pretty much anywhere in the map except for the entrance. So the trick to doing this task is actually to somehow lure the boss by hiding behind certain walls in the cave so that you can gradually get it to the entrance and then slowly going under the boss and dancing it towards the entrance. Alright, well that was unfortunate, so I underestimated what I had to do. Okay, closer, closer. Is this good? How much closer? <gasps> Healers, where are they? Where's the healers? Where's the healers? Yes! Oh my god, I almost trolled myself. I almost trolled myself, dude. Nice, but I got it without the heroes. And I didn't even have to tag him. I didn't have to tag him. And I wasted time not hitting the boss. Because I got a little scared trying to figure out what the healers were, but uh... Nice. <laughs> that was so close. Oh, this is the last melee guy. We finally did it after three tries. Oh my goodness. My muscle memory is absolutely trolling me there. But we're finally done with that. Yeah, there we go. Yay, I denied the healers. The normal healers. Alright, finally. We did it. Did it, did it. For real. Oh, smoke devils. Damn. Wait, I can do that. Isn't there like a task for this? Isn't there a smoke devil task? Oh, there is. An easy way to combine the special attack task and the no damage task from the boss is to hit it once with a spec weapon and immediately teleport out to your house. And then fair ring back and hit the boss again and tab out until it dies. Alright, we got ourselves a kill fight queen task. And it looks like we're gonna have to do two tries because Warhammer and the Vengeance one. You can't combine it with the Vraxfell one, so... 
So yeah, we're gonna have to do two different kills, and it's time to bring back Vol Varax for this original style method of Kelpie Queen, like the good old days. Man, I miss the Varax Flail method that people used to do. Yo, the bow is just gonna slap this task. A bit of a tip for the Venge KO task, you probably don't want to use the blowpipe because the poison can't accidentally kill at low HP. So it's better off to use a crossbow, or better yet, this new BIS bow here, the new Fernand bow at Kalfa Queen. So here is another place where I found the new bow of Fernand to be really good. Calfight Queen is quite tanky, so if you don't land the Warhammer, the blowpipe is definitely going to noodle now. But this bow, it doesn't really matter if you land any defense reduction specs because it's so goddamn accurate. And you can hit 50s with it, as demonstrated before. So it will penetrate this second phase of Calfight Queen like no problem. I guess it's overall best in slot range weapon here now. Alright, here we go. Please kill it. Yes, okay, not too hard. All right, let's go ahead and get, uh, let's get this Varak one done now. Okay, boys, it's time to do this. <laughs> oh boy, I haven't done for a flail method in ages. Like, like, holy shit. I hope I, I can do this. All right. I'm under the assumption that just wearing full Inquisitor and all that stuff with a flail for the first phase will probably beat it over full Varax, but I think I might need full Varax for the second phase, so we'll test the round and see what my results are, I guess. Oh, damn! Okay, I think this definitely feels way faster than using full Varax, because I don't remember my full Varax doing this much damage this fast. So yeah, I think it's better off to be on task and just bring like bandos or something. And just flail this guy. Without the actual armor. Holy crap, I am destroying it right now, boys. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, we don't need full Varax. Just be on task and wear bandos or something. Oh, yo! 195 Hellhounds. We can actually do some Cerberus tasks. What's good with Cerberus? It should be in the letter C. Okay, there's four tasks left. All right, what is it? All right. Damn, I completed three tasks in one. Feels good, man. Aru no more unrequited antifire anti-bite mechanic. I feel like some of these Slayer bosses are not really getting proper tasks at all because Smoke Devil, for example, only have four tasks. It's an easy boss, but they could have definitely made some fun tasks like, oh, kill a smoke devil using magic only or something, right? And Cerberus 2 had like almost nothing. There was a few tasks where it's basically just dodge the normal mechanics. The only kind of like weird one was you had to tank three sets of ghosts. But beyond that, there wasn't anything too unique about the task. Slightly disappointed. All right, there we go. Cerberus is done just like that. Ghostbusters. Damn, easy peasy. Wow. I've been here for like two minutes and I already finished servers. Okay, well, time to skip Hellhounds and find my next task. No, 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 no. Oh, Gargoyles in the Slayer Tower. Hell yeah. We got some Grotesque Guardians to do. Kill Grotesque Guardians 20 times without leaving the instance. I think I'm going to start with this one first because I can also complete the... Perfect grotesque guardians of five kills in a row without making mistakes. So yeah, we will do these two first, and that should allow me to complete a lot of these lower ones, lower lower level ones. Yeah. First kill back, and we managed to do a decent guardians where we pretty much dodge all the damage mechanics like the prison firewall at the end of the fight, or the little electricity nodes that are on the ground. Wow, we did a bunch at the same time. Okay. Don't look at the Eclipse Granite Footwork. Perfect Grotesque Guardians. Yay! Now I just gotta do that a few times. Mmm. Prayer Potions. Oh, yes. Yay, I completed an elite task from dusk. Woo! Oh, yeah, I'm definitely picking it up. 
Hello? Jesus. Thank God, man. That was scary. Oh, I did it! Yay! Perfect Grotesque Guardian 2 is done. Now I can actually slack off a bit. A good tip for those of you guys that are lower level trying to get into bossing for this 20 kill trip task is either you can bring Guthans and full prayer pots or SGS if you have more money. But honestly, with good mechanics, you can just live off of the food that you get from the bosses. Two 20 kills. Yes, I did it. Yay, the 20 task is done. Alright, and that leaves us with two tasks left. That's going to complete one of the tasks, though. Alright, all that's left is the 120 task. Oh man. Would have had it. 123, so close. If my Halley didn't miss. 121, oh my god. Damn, if my blowpipe was just a little bit stronger today, right then and there, man. Wow, one second off. Let me give you a big speed running tip. So at Grotesque Guardians, there are phase transitions from range to melee and back and forth, where you will have to wait no matter what. So during this waiting time, you technically could use a really slow and hard hitting weapon at the very end of every phase transition. So for Ranger at the end, when you know it's about to phase, just throw a Dark Bow Auto or a Ballista Auto and it'll count whatever damage you end up doing. And the cooldown is not a big deal since you have to wait. And for the melee transition, you want to throw a Crystal Halberd spec because, again, the transitions you have to wait anyways. So it's worth it. Or remember all the extra damage that you did. So the next phase you do is a lot quicker. 120? Wait, that's done. We're done. Right? Easy. Never mind. Alrighty, we got it, boys. Nice. Shout out thralls, because like I literally switched to thralls and uh I guess that was my lucky my lucky thralls. DPS, I guess. And Grotesque Guardian is done. Yay. Alrighty, cool. What a great uh great way to end the day. Screw that. Ooh, hell yeah. We got 80 cave krakens for the combat diaries. Wait a minute. Kill the kraken 100 times and privately... Okay, so these are all literally KC ones. But this is messed up. I only have 80 of them. Unless my slaughter bracelet procs enough. Alright, we finished the easy one. Okay. Yo, I don't know when they added the freaking fishing explosive quality of life to skip... Tagging the tentacles, but this shit is awesome. Love using it. Yay. I did a 50 KC one. Now I need to do 50 more. Except I only have 34 left. So these solder bracelets better start working. Because I need it pretty bad. Big hit. No. Oh my god. No. That's so sad. 99 kills. On average, the slaughter was supposed to proc like 24 times, but it procced less than 20 times. Only 19 times, so we got pretty unlucky, and we ended with one left. I brought my max cape so that I can use the spellbook swap to Lunars and hopefully NPC contact. A 10% chance to get another Kraken task using the Slayer cape perk. I need another task. No! It's over. No, don't give me freaking no bronze dragons. Oh, there it is, boys. Using dark great axe as a weapon while having no more than 10 light points throughout the entire fight. Ooh, that's tricky. This one's a little tricky. 120. Oh, dude, this is going to be my first time doing this boss without having to count at all. I can't wait to see how this animation thing works. Wow, damn, the animation is so obvious. First kill back, got three super easy tasks done, dodging the poison, not getting hit by electricity, not getting hit by the flame wall. Really basic mechanic dodges. Nice, three tasks done in a row, poggers. 
Nice. I finished two tasks and run one kill. Mixing correctly and our clinical hydra. Nice, nice fun, Jagex. Nice fun. Ooh, nice. I completed another task. The speed chaser task. Sweet. So the next task I'm working on is the flame skip task, which means I got to kill the red phase before it summons the fires. And there's a good trick to this. I try to get the boss down to right before 550 because under 550 is when it swaps to red. I want to make sure that on the last hits from blue to red, I hit it as big as possible. If I can do that, let's say I hit a 70, that means I start off the red phase with it already being really low and I can have a much greater chance to push it to the last phase without flames. Perfect. Skip the flame. Hell yeah. Done. The flame skipper done. Ooh, working overtime. Done. Alright, so now we gotta do some of the weird kills. You guys probably already seen the Vengeance Thrall trick that Soul Mission did for the Hydra sub 120 PB. And yeah, I couldn't have thought of any other better method, but I ended up getting it without having to do that trick just because I've done so much Hydra. I just know when a kill is super fast based on uh, how smooth the transitions between phases were and how much damage I'm doing overall. I noticed that this kill, I was transitioning perfectly with almost no time loss whatsoever and my hits were giant. So all I had to do was send those claws at the end for a perfect finish. Dude, this is a 120 right here. Oh yeah, definitely a sub-120, bro. <laughs> 100% guaranteed. Yep, 114. Easy. Damn, I, I barely even tried for that one. Jesus Christ, that was uh, that was some insane hits. Jesus. Crazy, dude. Crazy. Okay, well. Uh, that could have taken a long time, but uh, I got some stupid... I saw those hits, man. I saw those hits and I pushed it. Didn't even really need the Venge because the claws just wiped the floor with the last phase. Alright, time to do the Darox. And that should be a really fun one. So let's go and do some Daroxing. Yeah. We're going to go in there and if it's range, you know, click on the purple suite and hope for the best. <laughs> if I die, I die, you know? Okay, good, 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 good. Huh. Can I summon thralls, by the way? Does this work? Oh, you can summon thralls. That's sick. You have more than 10 HP? Oh, are you serious? Oh, fuck. Sag, I failed it. Here's an example of how you take eat in order to survive the opposite prayer for this task. As soon as you see the animation, you just click on the purple sweet and it should be good. Oh wait, I'm an idiot. I forgot to switch attack styles. Oh, 100. Let's go. Oh shit, I just tanked the hit. Fuck. I got lucky there that I tanked the hit. Okay, now we just pay attention and we're good. Well, that was uh, pretty spooned because I tanked the hit. Okay, well, that should finish it. Alright, got lucky. We finished all of Hydra. So in the next progress videos, I'll be covering a lot of wilderness stuff and a little bit of God Wars. Because in order to do the rest of the Grandmaster stuff, I do have to finish the Hard Diaries for the private instance of God Wars. Most of the God Wars tasks a lot behind that. But now we are over 300 tasks total at 410. So we are now over three quarters of the way to completion. And about half of the Grandmaster is now done. So yeah, look forward to more content for the Combat Diaries coming up.